Hey all, this is another Let's Build with Tailwind CSS, and this one's gonna focus on getting down into using Post CSS uh, locally so we can kind of configure Tailwind on our own and or just show you the process of doing so. Um, so I'm gonna actually start with something that Adam Wathen published that's called Playground under the Tail Tailwind CSS namespace in GitHub. And it's more or less a Webpack post CSS based configuration for getting started with Tailwind. Um, there is some compilation and stuff that needs to happen behind the scenes for this to work and be modified in terms of configuration. So that's why I'm going to focus on this just to kind of get you primed for what that it has in store. Uh, so you can clone this down, which I'll do uh, along with you. And then we'll actually build what is a nav bar in this case by default. Sure. doesn't look that cool or, you know, Interesting, but it is fully responsive and it does use only CSS to toggle the actual menu here. So when you click on that, uh, it'll drop and show these in block fashion as well as an avatar. So we use some icons as well as just my blog's logo uh, just for placeholder. Feel free to swap those out with your own. But this is fully Tailwind CSS minus one little class I add to make that uh, drop down work right here. We actually use a checkbox um, and a label to kind of make sure that that toggles state. Uh, you could use JavaScript as well, but this is just fully CSS. And I wanted to show you how I went about creating this. So let's get started. I'm going to clone this repo. It's the playground. I'll link to this and also my finished piece, which you'll see on my uh, GitHub repo. It's the Tailwind nav bar. And this is like literally what I ended up with. So it might fluctuate based on what you see in this video, but it is something that should be relatively close. So I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna quit. I have a current server running from that Tailwind navbar instance. I'm gonna CD out and I'm in a Tailwind directory and my sites directory. So I'll show you. Uh, I just kind of namespace it for these videos. So that's just kind of where I'm at. You can put yours anywhere you want in that case. Let me bump up the size for you guys. In fact, I think I have another profile that makes this huge. Yeah, so sites, tailwind. Cool. So I'm going to clone that starter kit. It's called Playground into this app. And I'll go grab that um, link and it'll just say git clone and then paste that in. And it should pull that down and call it Playground. Uh, I'm going to maybe change that name. So I'll, easiest way to do that for me is just to open it in Finder, highlight it, hit enter, and say Tailwind. We'll just say, yeah, Tailwind Navbar Final, something like that. So we know the difference. So this will be the one I reference, and this will be the one that will end up being customized for our liking. Uh, so by default, when you enter cd into that folder real quick nav bar final cool open it in visual studio code and i probably have this up in a different folder i have my current finished piece in this desktop and the, the last one here and is the brand new app you notice this show recommendations uh, adam included a vs code extension where it recommends a Tailwind CSS uh, highlight. So when you type a class name, it kind of auto displays a menu if you're trying to use a specific class name relative to Tailwind. That's updated to version one, which is cool. Uh, I'm gonna actually remove that. So future, you won't see this when you open code if you have it. Uh, otherwise, don't worry about that. So our Tailwind config, this is where everything's gonna happen inside your Tailwind CSS file, which gets produced here. Nothing really exists yet besides the base resets and stuff that come with Tailwind. Uh, in the post CSS config is where basically you'll define Tailwind CSS as a post CSS library. You'll require auto prefixer and it'll do its magic. Um, on production, if you do ship this somewhere, it will, using that environment, it will use this library called purge CSS. And it kind of just namespaces any file that has an HTML extension in your public directory, assuming you use this in the wild, and goes for this regex um, capture to where if anything matches that, it will actually kind of 
take it out of the picture because you aren't using those classes or something. So feel free to use this in a production app. Um, I've used it. It does save tons of size in terms of the final Tailwind CSS file, assuming you don't use a lot of the classes or colors. Uh, but to really make this easier on yourself, your, your config file can be pretty light as well. So you would enter just the basic stuff you really need in the end in this file instead of just everything, which comes by default. So for the purposes of this tutorial though, I'm gonna use the default configuration file and you can find that on Tailwind's docs. So I'll go to get started and try to find that. There it is. So if you search for config, uh, it'll pop up a little link to a default config, which is just kind of a, something Adam has on a stub under Tailwind CSS. So we'll grab the raw version of that and just copy it down. This is absolutely everything that comes stock with Tailwind if you want to use the default theme. I really recommend customizing this to use your own theme or any other class names you want to have. You can extend it with plugins. Uh, you can extend just how things look even by default too. So the way it works is all these are namespaced by say this gray class. So Say I want to have text gray, uh, I can say text gray 100 through 900 in this case. If I were to remove any of these and this were to run under uh, build, everything would just kind of work. And um, this is actually post CSS instead of webpack here, but it would just work under the hood. And if you wanted to remove any of these, you totally could. You just have to remember that you did remove them so you don't use those classes in your markup. Since I'm using this as default, I'm going to leave it as is. Feel free to customize this. You see there's tons of colors to choose from. We certainly don't need all of these, especially for what we're building, but it is something that you could pay attention to to save a ton of CSS uh, kilobyte size or megabyte size. Hopefully it doesn't get in the megabytes. Uh, Tailwind by itself is a pretty large library. It's bigger than Bootstrap and stuff. In the end, if you use this default and don't uh, remove any configuration, so take that um, into consideration when you're dealing with this stuff. Uh, on top of that, I want to update our index file. If you were just run this by default, you get a starter screen, which I'll, I'll show you that first. So let me point your attention to the package.json file, which actually does run uh, the post CSS stuff behind the scenes. So there is a name called serve, one called development, and one called production. So these just more or less change the environment and run specific things relative to post CSS for the Tailwind installation in particular. So this is a lot more than just serving from the CDN like we've done in the last few videos. It's, it's a lot more, I would say, complicated. So if you're new to this, don't worry. Uh, maybe just download this starter kit and just run what I'm about to run. And then like I copied over, you could just do the same thing here too. So what I'll do is run it to get you started. So it's going to be yarn. I'm going to do a yarn install first, just so we get everything. We don't have our node modules yet. So you'll need to run that first. Okay. So with that done, all that really changed is now we have a node modules directory here with a ton of dependencies, which is, I don't know, everyone has their reservations about how much crap you need to download but it does seem to work at this point. So anything in here was just downloaded the same with these. So what we'll do next is run yarn serve. It'll run that task as you saw, uh, right? Well, it'll run this one serve looking in the public directory for any changes. So once they change, you'll see things that kind of, transpire and refresh the page. There's a build folder. Once the Tailwind CSS is fully built, it comes out and spits this way. And then production, it would actually kind of transpile this down to minified CSS. So this is what you get by default. So what we don't, we don't really want this, but it is kind of a nice place to start. So I'll go ahead and delete this. This is where I'm going to start. It's the basic template of an HTML5 style sheet and templates. So we have our style sheet linking in from the build directory here. And then I'm going to rename this title to what this will be in the end. So let's just say let's build with Tailwind CSS. And we'll say responsive navbar. Okay. 
So this automatically updates on the fly too. So when you save, it'll update on the index. We don't have anything at this point. So we're running that server since we served it and so far nothing, which is fine. If I were to just say, hey, here's some text, it'll actually, you know, when I save, it'll display. Cool. All right, so with that in mind, I'm gonna kind of start in on some mega classes thanks to Tailwind. We'll have a slight gray background, so we'll just kind of offset that from bare white so our nav bar stands out a little bit. The main nav itself will live inside a header element. And Tailwind's pretty nice and responsive design in the sense that the namespace is um, large, medium, middle, large, medium, small, these little class prefixes. And when you prefix them with a colon in the class name, you can kind of, you know, t uh, target CSS in such a way uh, when this, the screen is a certain width, it will respond accordingly. So in our case, I'm going to set on large screens to have padding on both right and left of 16. And 16 is, doesn't mean pixels, it kind of just means, what would it mean actually, like rims? Yeah, so 16 correlates to four rims, so figure a quarter. So that just gives it kind of a full width appearance, but still offset from the edge in the end. So we'll start there. We're gonna have a padding of six when it's down to mobile. Notice the large means for large screens, and then otherwise we're gonna do a six. And we'll have a background of white for that. It's gonna be flex dependent. So we'll do flex, flex wrap. Make sure the items are centered inside that. Uh, we won't have padding on the top and bottom. We'll actually do P, Y, zero, and P, Y, two. On mobile, we will just slightly. Okay, so inside here, this is gonna be kind of where the logo will live in the end, but we are gonna add some flex to it so it's positioned accordingly and, and spans kind of the full width of the nav bar. So we push our actual menu items to the right. So thanks to Flexbox so between. Item center. Okay. I'll have a link inside this div and it's actually going to encase the logo element of my blog, which I'm going to steal from the current project that I already have open. Uh, it's a large SVG, so feel free to do the same. I don't really want to type all those digits for you guys. I don't think you'd find that useful. So already we have that in place and that nav bar there. Uh, we don't have padding yet, but you'll see why in a second once we get to the menu items, which will have the padding we need to push things out of the way. Um, up next, after the link element, we'll have an actual label element and I'm gonna call this menu toggle. And this is kind of a, a trick to use a label for the target element inside of a checkbox to drop down that menu instead of reaching for JavaScript uh, directly. So we could uh, target it with this, use the checkbox kind of on off state to target it in such a way. So it's a little trick uh, I've seen in the wild lately. If you wanna go completely CSS, which is fine. Uh, I don't know that it works in like Internet Explorer, older Internet Explorer, but you probably need to reach for JavaScript for something like that. After the input or after the label will be the input and it's actually going to be a class or type of checkbox. I'm going to give it a class of hidden because we don't really want to see the checkbox. We're going to use the label to target it. That's the big trick. And notice the ID of it correlates to the uh, label itself. So inside here, I'm going to put another SVG that is the menu icon, which again, I'm going to steal from my current project just to save some time. Okay. And notice I have a couple classes here. Fill current kind of says, okay, whatever the current color you pass as the text color, the SVG will take. So in this case, text gray 900 will be the, just that. And if I refresh the page, I think we won't see that until we're on mobile. 
Yeah, so there we go. So that's the icon I just added. It's only present on the top on the mobile layer. As you notice, we have large hidden, but block on the mobile. And this should be pointer cursor. So when I go and target it, it might be cursor pointer. I might have that backwards. Yeah, so there we go. Okay, so it doesn't do anything yet, but we know that bit works and it's in our stack. Okay, so below the input, we're gonna have another div, make some space here. And this will be more or less the nav itself and what gets shown and hidden on mobile. So hidden by default, and then large will be flex. So it will display automatically when you're on desktop screens. Notice the namespace large in front of each. And with full. Okay, I'm gonna give this a class of ID. And the reason for this, I'll just go ahead and add this so we have it all ready to go. Uh, this is the only caveat I needed to add it to add outside of the spectrum of Tailwind simply because doing a checkbox state plus doesn't really come with Tailwind. So we need to do something like this menu toggle. And for the check state plus menu, so we could target the menu itself. Notice the ID I just added will display block. So when this input checkbox is actually toggled on that this bit will actually toggle block. So it will display right now it's hidden. Okay. So that'll make more sense when we put it to practice, but let me add the remaining bits inside here. So we're going to have an actual nav element and inside that a list item we'll start with li class here will be Quite a few large flex item center justify between text base notice the autocomplete i'm getting that's that plugin uh, that was recommended earlier it is useful if you're if you're in tailwind often so padding top four and large padding top zero all right so each li is going to have uh, an encasing link. Um, the li itself won't have any class names, but the uh, um, link element will. So we'll say lgp4, py3, px0, block, border b2, border transparent. Hover, we'll say border indigo. 400 and this one will be features and I'm just gonna copy and paste these now you probably in my own work if I were to just kind of scale this I would extract this probably into a components and say like maybe nav link class and then add that to either this tailwind CSS file or another file that it gets added to the same style sheets so we can actually use post CSS on and then you would do this thing in Tailwind called at apply. Yeah, extracting components. If you go to this section, you see that um, Adam's got stuff like this that you could extract. And say you wanted to do a button in this case, you can name it what you want, but then come back in and at, do this at apply rule that uses the same classes, but they're just grouped. So you don't have to use so many classes over and over every time you need to use them. So that's one way you could work around that. In this case, since it's just a show and tell kind of concept, I want to just reuse it. So I'll paste this in, I think about four or five times. And the difference will be the name. So pricing documentation support Actually, this last one will go. 
below the nav element, I'm going to add a avatar and that's going to be like the user's account. So assuming they're signed in, they'd see something like this. Uh, there's no way I can show it if they're signed out at this point, but that is something you could extend on your own in say rails or Laravel or whatever it is you're using. So we need quite a few classes to make this work. We need to say justify start large bottom zero Ooh. margin bottom zero margin bottom four on mobile and we'll say cursor pointer okay and inside that i'm going to have an image and i'm going to steal that soon from my other project it's a gravatar link uh, so you can grab your own there full width 10 height 10 border we'll have two two uh, pixel border but we'll start with transparent so when you hover there will be a border color but otherwise there won't so here's that hover state so we'll say border indigo 400 alt i'll just use my name andy leverance I'm gonna go steal that image. You could go to, well, I think I took this from my Twitter image, which is probably a good place to go. Uh, just grab that, paste it in here. It should be good. So let's go see where we're at. This is the other site. This is the, this is the current site, so this works. Okay, so we have that. Uh, this should have a hover state, doesn't appear to be working at this point. Uh, so let me double check my class names there. Oh, it looks like I have hover should be border indigo. So I'm gonna change that here. If you highlight one and do command D, you can change them all, assuming they're the same. So the hover Border indigo 400. And let's see if that does the trick. There we go. That's what I wanted. So that bottom border actually has a highlight when you hover over it. And then our avatar does too. So right now on mobile, it isn't showing, but we can't actually get this to work. Uh, so we need to actually add some of that functionality too. Uh, but I also want to add a little content area just to give something, um, some perspective down below. So let's add that next. So below that actual header element, we'll add just some basic markup. So we'll say PX4. And then let's see, max width. Max width. 3XL, BG white rounded large mx auto margin y 16 p 16. this is kind of just a containing box that's shifted to the center and set a max width on it uh, then we'll have an h1 class which probably should be maybe h2 but that's okay uh, so this will be text 2xl font medium margin bottom two Okay, and then below that we'll have H2, class, font, medium. Uh, this will be kind of just a uppercase rendition of a title, so text, indigo, 400, margin, bottom, four, uppercase, tracking wide. We'll say responsive nav bar and then below that just some text we don't need anything fancy if you type lorem um, the word lorem and hit tab and code it'll actually autocomplete with some markup for you so that gives us this basic space uh, so after this i want to make sure that our nav bar will actually function on click it looks like it's not at the moment so i'm going to troubleshoot why because i think it should be working 
Uh, that's it's why it's, you probably saw that I mistyped toggle. So let's try that again. See if this works. There we go. We got some some issues with display. So let's double check that. Uh, I think I forgot to close this div in particular. So let's try that. There we go. Yeah. So there was some. I didn't have a closing div on that bit, but it seems to be working. Uh, that div needed to be closed right after the main logo, if you weren't sure. There we go. So that's essentially it for a basic navbar in Tailwind. Um, you notice I didn't need to reach for pretty much any custom CSS other than this toggle, which I think is pretty strong selling point for Tailwind. Uh, I could scaffold this stuff up real fast if I want to refactor it and extract these, for instance, as components. I totally could. Uh, it's definitely not out of the ordinary to do that, and it's actually probably smart to because you'll probably have future nav links or specific links relative to a nav bar that you might use in the future. So that's it for this one. Uh, hopefully you found it useful. The big difference here between the previous videos is that we actually pulled down a repo using post CSS in this case and ran Tailwind locally instead of on CodePen. Uh, the other big difference is we did a lot more responsiveness with this uh, setup as opposed to stuff in the past where I just built the main UI and kind of left it go. Um, it's really easy to get into the responsive mindset thanks to the namespaces in Tailwind. So you could absolutely and positively modify these to be whatever you want. Uh, I really prefer the defaults in my opinion. It's kind of something I've just been using um, along the way as Tailwind has aged. Uh, so it's finally to version one and you can kind of play it safe in this case to stay at version one and know that uh, your app won't need to be updated later uh, too much uh, as it did in the past for some of the stuff I've had to update since the beta version was out. So um, I think that's it. If you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments and I appreciate you guys watching. All right. So long for now. Peace. Hello Rails is my new course on Ruby on Rails. I'll teach you Ruby on Rails from the ground up. Visit hellorails.io for more information.